be less than one hour, so you should be able to get your lunch at by noon. And uh, we're going to uh, go a little bit deeper on the ideas behind um, breakthrough small groups today. So I just wanna give you an overview of what we're going to do today. So we're gonna talk about other ways to meet first. So uh, Breakthrough is a, a wonderful opportunity. I, I really love the way that Breakthrough um, makes it easy to be a small group leader, but I feel like we need to offer other opportunities. So I'm going to share one and then Ed Martin from Haddonfield United Methodist Church is on the call today. And Ed is going to uh, share some things that are happening in his church in small groups. Then we're going to go through Breakthrough Telling Your Story, the second lesson. So that's, that's the plan for uh, today's lesson. And so the first thing I wanna talk about is care groups. Uh, but um, just wanna make sure, is anyone on the, today's call that was not on um, last week's calls, either Wednesday morning or uh, Thursday evening? If you weren't on the call, I invite you to unmute yourself so you can press down your space bar if you're on a computer. You can tap it on, I think they told me it was the left-hand corner if you're on an iPad. But unmute yourself and introduce yourself. So Patty, I think you're the first one. Hi, I'm Patty Gritson. Um, I'm uh, chair of the church council at First United Methodist Church in Morristown. And uh, was sorry that I wasn't able to join last week, but happy to be here today. We're glad you're here too. Thank you. Is there, there anyone else? I, I think most of these are familiar faces. Bonnie, I'm not sure about you because I can't see your face, but I guess, you know, okay. So I'm gonna just trust. Last week we had about 45 people between the two calls. So um, um, it was a really great turnout. And the thing that was very exciting to me, um, except for I think two, it was all lay persons. And this is what small group ministry is about. Small groups are laity led and pastor supported. So lay people really have the onus of, of you know, taking the leadership in small group ministry. And if your small groups in your church are going to be successful, you, they need to be led by the laity because that's the only way they can multiply enough to cover all the people in your congregation. At best, some of you have two pastors. I think Haddonfield has two pastors and on this call is probably the only church that has two pastors unless someone from Trinity is on this call. Oh, uh, you have two? Morristown has two pastors? Okay. But most of you have one pastor and at best someone can lead, at best someone can lead two small groups. If you try to lead more than two, you're, it really, you're gonna lose some of those relational pieces and it becomes very rote. So the best you can do is to have connections with two small groups. So even if you only have a church of 30 people, if you have the max of 10 people in each group, that means that 10 people are gonna be left out. If you look at your church size and you divide that by 10, that's how many lay leaders you need to step up to lead small mm. groups. And that's if you're putting 10 in the group for a breakthrough group or kind of the, what Ed's gonna talk about his group. They can have 10 people on Zoom and comfortably run. If you're gonna do the next kind of group that I'm gonna to share today, which is called a care group, care groups work best with about five to seven people at the very most. So um, for care groups, what you, what you can do is, you know, sit down with your pastor and um, begin to brainstorm of who are good leaders, um, good people that um, could possibly be small group hosts. So who remembers an equality of a small group host from last week? So I'll mute yourself and kind of shout out a, a, a characteristic of a small group leader. Anybody remember one? Margie. Let's see. Can 
Try it again. There Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, a good listener. A good listener. So you look through your list and you say, who is a good listener? Does anybody else remember a characteristic? The most important characteristic of a small group leader is someone who is an encourager. So someone who encourages people, someone who um, is very invitational, someone who sends out cards, who makes phone calls. So uh, an encouraging person doesn't mean um, that they have to be a good teacher. You might not, they might not be the person you put on ad council or as a finance council member or a trustee. Maybe they are, but sometimes, most of the time they're not. But they're the people who are the greeters. Who are the people in your kitchen? Who are the people who do children's ministry? They are usually encouragers. So these encouragers, these good listeners, as Margie told us, they're the ones that you want to look at. And then you can give them a, a call and say, who are four or five people in your circle that you could connect with on a regular basis? So weekly or every other week. So, um, Patty, when we were on a call for Morristown, your um, church came up with some ideas as to who, who might be some of the people that they could connect with. So share a couple of your ideas that Morristown had. Wait, you're not unmuted. Wait. There, not yet. There. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, so um, I, I, I don't know that it was so much that we talked about um, different people, but we talked about different ways we could do some small groups, um, um, maybe, maybe to have the um, coffee hour again um, is the one that um, is most memorable to me. Um, and uh, what was neat about that uh, in, in talking about using the Zoom technology was uh, the idea that uh, we could wind up having breakout groups. I mean, you know, so that, it, you know, if we wound up having 30 people come to an, a, a Zoom online coffee hour after service, you know, that's not, that might not be enough. Uh, uh, we, we might want to then have use breakout rooms to get people to mix and mingle and, and right have um, good conversation yeah and I, I think that that's part of it you know who do you sit with in coffee hour who do you sit ne with next to church who are people who are in your circle so choirs could um, break up into a couple different groups you know your praise team could be a group so there's who are you natch who are your affinity who are your people in church who are the people you really miss gather those people together and um you know you don't need to um you know, there will be people that you need to plug in with others because they might not have a natural affinity group. Maybe some of those will be shut-ins. Um, but most people have a way that they gather already. And then you want to look at also, if you're going to go beyond the, like, how do we naturally gather, who might be in the same neighborhood? So when we finally do get to maybe get together in small groups, who might be in the same area that they might have like a little um, uh, uh, block party because they, they could all go outside and have social distancing and, and yet um, see each other and have some conversation. So who might be in the same geographic area? And when, you're, you have, when you pick people that are in the same geographic area, then um, later on, when the church um, buildings reopen, um, it might um, facilitate, you know, still getting together. And so what care groups do is they, they combat isolation and they foster connection. A care group does not need any kind of agenda or curriculum. The purpose of a care group is solely asking the question, how is it with your soul? So they're asking the question beyond how are you? So I don't know about you um, these days when, when someone says to me, 
how are you? I don't even know how to answer that question. Because mm -hmm. like, do you really want to know how I am? Or do you, or am I supposed to give this pre you know, I'm fine, you know? So this gives us a place to, to really um, answer that question. For John Wesley, this was really the essence of a, a, a class meeting, was that people could go deeper in their conversation and Wesley used the, the term, they could watch over one another. I love that. What does it look like to have someone who um, watches over one another? So Karen had a question. Please read out oh, why, why we have care groups. We have care groups to combat isolation. And then the second reason that we have care groups is to foster connection. So if we get people that are really connected, and I think that you can connect easily with five or six people, then you can connect with 20 people. So this gives us a, a small group of people that they begin to know your story. And because they know your story, then they can really watch over one another. So that's the, the important piece. And um, so we kind of drew up a list and I will send this to you. So again, we're gonna practice the chat today. I'm gonna to invite you all to put your email address in the chat box. That way I can send you the information on care groups. But um, you can ask questions like, how am I drawing closer to God? What is creating a block in my connection with God? Um, what is draining my energy and my faith? What is bringing life to me? How can we pray for each other? Are any of you, did any of you go through the walk to Emmaus or Christias um, training or uh, at any time? Yeah, okay. So in walk to Emmaus, one of the essentials is something they call the group reunion. And so they ask questions like, how did I draw closer to Christ? How did I uh, fail Christ? So these, these are very much care groups, reunion groups, covenant groups. Somebody um, last week on um, one of the call calls had a, uh, a book called the, uh, the Group Class Meeting, and that talks about covenant groups. These are all pretty much the same thing. So, I think that this is one easy step uh, that you can take for small group ministry. Ed, um, I'm going to invite you uh, to chat for a little bit about what's happening at Haddonfield and the group that you are a part of. Well, thanks very much, Dean. I appreciate your uh, offer and speak to the group. Um, a little bit of background. I'm a lifelong Methodist, and uh, my experience with small groups goes back pretty close to 40 years now um, and the first one was very interesting and it and it can relate I think what I'm going to tell you relates to different types of small groups um, that you can be involved with the first one was uh, when my kids were little uh, my wife is a Roman Catholic and we attended the uh, Catholic Church as well as the Methodist Church as often as we could and the Diocese of Camden back then started a program called Renew. And it was based on small groups, which I think in the Catholic Church is probably something very new. And in most churches was something that hadn't been used for a long time. Uh, they asked us to be uh, small group leaders, and we agreed. And um, in that case, I think it ran for about two and a half to three years in, in six-month sessions. and people had signed up to be parts of small groups. And I believe the leadership assigned uh, members of the groups by basically by neighborhood. So you didn't have, leaders didn't have a choice of who, to, who they wanted. The participants didn't have a choice with who their leader was. It was assigned geographically. And um, there was a, for each six month session, there was a specific curriculum that we followed. And we went along very well. And it was good because it got people out of their shells. It got people to, to know people who they probably never even bothered to talk to in church. And we learned a lot of stuff. 
Uh, fast forward about 30 years to uh, while well, I was at Stratford, the UMC, and we tried to re, uh, reestablish small groups, and we did. We, we established, uh, Stratford was fairly small. It was probably about 80 people. Um, we got about three or four groups started, uh, and these were more like affinity groups. Who did you want to meet with, or maybe whose group was meeting at a time that was convenient? Um, our group uh, is probably up to about 18 people. We're still meeting after 10 years, and we do our own studies. Uh, we'll pick a book. We've done some John Ortberg's. We've done some Max Lucado's. We've done uh, world religions. We've done Christian heroes. Uh, we've done all kinds of history of hymns, and we met. Uh, Monday night by Zoom, and we had a, a virtual scavenger hunt in amongst, in amongst our devotionals. And um, we really have clicked and we've really kept together. Uh, I've been at Haddonfield for about two and a half years now. And about after the, I was there a year, I was asked if I wanted to lead a small group. And we were in a program that we call Connect which is an ideal name for a small group program, because that's what you're really doing. You're connecting with people. You're forming relationships. Um, I was kind of surprised that I was asked since I was new, but uh, I told them that for me and my schedule, the best time would be immediately after the nine o'clock service, right in the church. Nobody else wanted that time, so we were established. Um, and we have uh, about 16 people in total. We're averaging about 10 people per meeting. Um, and what Connect has done is the pastors have developed um, written Connect guide booklets based on the sermon series that pastors are preaching. And each week uh, it's based off the, the sermon. Uh, there's an icebreaker question, there's a, a rereading of the scripture and some questions about that. Uh, there might be a section of the sermon or a section of a related book uh, that's quoted that we'll read and there'll be questions there. So we'll actually be able to talk about what we got out of the sermon, what we think, what our theology is becoming. Uh, it's a safe place. Uh, I would say that Half the group are established Haddonfield UMC people, and the other half are what I call the exiles from uh, Stratford UMC. We had a bunch of us leave uh, two, two years ago, and a lot of us came to Haddonfield. So half and half uh, uh, of that. So I knew, I knew a lot of the people, I have gotten to know the others, and we are meeting still every Sunday, right after the nine o'clock service by Zoom. Um, we're averaging 11 people. Uh, they haven't been able to come up with connect guides recently, but we'll be discussing the sermon. We'll be discussing how it is with our souls in this time of trial. And um, it's, it's really good. When they don't have a sermon series, we have the option of either picking a book that might be suggested by the clergy or we might just decide to meet on our own for general discussion or once in a while we just go out to the restaurant for breakfast after church and uh, and have some fellowship so um i think it's working very well but as i say the the, the main idea for a small group is to form those relationships where uh, you can really get to know people. They feel safe. Um, Got to be confidential. You don't want to go spreading tales because uh, then you lose your people's uh, confidence. Uh, one more thing I would like to mention is that uh, we are trying to establish a new discipleship formation program. And one of the things that uh, Pastor Chris uh, Heckert wants to do is to uh, try to establish some more small groups. The, the target was 20 small groups, 200 people involved. Uh, last I heard, we had 175 people involved in our connect groups. 
Um, but I don't think there's 17 and a half groups. There's, some are more than 10, some are less. I'm going to say there's probably about 13 to 15 groups that are established. Uh, but the next step is Chris would like to uh, form some closed invitational small groups. And I, I volunteered to, uh, to lead one of those where I think he is going to search around for people that he thinks would be, um, it would be beneficial for them to, to belong in a small group. And, and I don't know whether any of you know Chris Heckert, but uh, he is a gifted pastor and he's got the intuition and the, and the uh, ability to match people together. And I have no doubt that if he if he goes ahead with this and and picks a small group for me to lead, I, I think he's going to get people who are really interested and are going to be in the right place. Again, like Gina said, you don't need to be a teacher. I'm the last person that you want teaching a class. You'd be falling asleep. You probably are already. But um, the idea is to make people feel comfortable, uh, give them a starting point. I'm kind of uh, not your standard uh, orthodox theological person, so I'll, f I'll throw out ideas for people to think about, and we'll see what kind of discussion we have. But, but the idea, again, is to, is to make that connection, make that uh, relationship, and, and give people a reason to, to want to be at your small group meeting. Um, and so far, the groups that I've been associated with have been exactly that and they've been successful uh like i said we've got one that's going on for more than 10 years now and we wouldn't even think about breaking it up so that's my story thanks a lot ed does anybody have any questions for ed Well, if you think of anything i will we can you know wrap up that at the end but thanks a lot and i do I love the fact that you did. Uh, Gina, excuse yeah. me, Gina. Yeah, could, yeah. could I could I just yeah. ask get a question, maybe? Uh, sure, if I, Craig. Oh, thank you, uh, and thank you for sharing that. That was really good and very encouraging. Um, with lots of times in small groups, you know, you'll pray for each other, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is something that's really powerful when someone's praying for me, or you know, or someone I'm praying for someone else. Uh, at least I find that very encouraging for someone praying for me. So. If you're in a group with 10 people, uh, you know, you go out to the diner or whatever, you, how, how do you kind of work? Do you work that in at all to this group or is that not part of what you guys are doing? Well, usually, I mean, if, we, if we're at the week where there's no scheduled lesson and we decide we're going to go out to the diner, about mm -hmm. as spiritual as we get at the diner is that we publicly pray at the beginning. We say grace. Right. But that's more or less a fellowship time. You know, anything, yeah. anything is fair game at that point. When we have, and, and this goes for both groups, the group at Haddonfield and our other group, um, we always have a prayer at the beginning, no matter what the scheduled topic is, whether it's a lesson that, that Karen Brewer and I have planned for our one group or if it's the Connect Guide, and we always take time at the end for prayer. In the Connect Guide that Chris puts out for us, uh, there's always the last statement on there is, how can we be in prayer for one another? Mm -hmm. So we do that. And our other group, we have uh, what we call a prayer log. It's a eight and a half by 11 sheet lined off. And there's a place for the date and the name of the person who brings the petition and whatever it is, whether it's a prayer or a praise. We, we list them all down. Everybody takes that home. As long as they feel like writing it down, they'll take it home with them so they have it. Uh, and we conclude with the prayer. And, and if I'm the one praying us out, I try to, to include every name that's been spoken or every petition that's been made or every praise that's been offered, uh, okay. in addition to those that remain on our hearts. So that's absolutely right. a part of both of my current small groups. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Good Very question. Good. And you Thank know what? You. I, I'm glad you asked that question, Greg, because sometimes that's the, a person that you need to add to your group. So, 
maybe you're the encourager, but maybe you're not really um, all that comfortable with praying aloud. But we all know people in our churches that, you know, that's their gift, that they're prayer champions. And so um, consider when you're planning your small group to invite a prayer champion who might take that off your plate. So I usually say, if you're gonna meet in person, you need to have three kinds of people. You need to have someone who has hospitality. The second one is to have someone who is an encourager. And the third is to have someone who is the prayer. And then if the three of you kind of take co-leadership over the group, then you, you kind of match all the things. You know, Ed talked about the fact that he's with someone in his group. So that, that really helps manage the things. I think that maybe if you're online, you still need hospitality, but maybe that person who maybe skews toward having technical gifts. <laughs> So if you have somebody who has some technical gifts, somebody who is a prayer and someone who's an encourager, that would be great for uh, that time. So. And, and after, after you've been together for a while, you, you can pick out those people very easily so that if there's a day when, you know, you don't, you said a lot of things during the meeting because maybe people weren't forthcoming with answers or they were reluctant for some reason or it's just a down day and you've had to spend a lot of time filling in the uh, dead air with your own uh, thoughts then then pick out that other person to to close in prayer let them let them pray it's, it's kind of hard because you don't want to put the person on the spot and then have them f fumble around but after a while you get to, to to know who those people are who are comfortable like that and you can you can rely on them to to bail you out or to to assist you or or just to get another voice in there. It can't always be the leader's voice for the begin, opening prayer and the ending prayer and right. asking all the questions. You want everybody as much as they can to participate. And our groups, uh, my two groups, uh, have gotten to the point where I could ask just about anybody to pray, and I'm sure they would. Um, and I can rely on everybody to put their two cents in, whether it's agreeing with whatever has been said or, or even contradicting it. We've had some uh, quite oppos opposing uh, viewpoints on a lot of things, and we're still together. Nobody's punched anybody out or walked out in a house. Well, that's good. Well, thank you, Ed. Thanks a lot. Uh, Margie, yeah. yes. Could you repeat that, Margie? There you go. There you go. Were... There you go, Margie. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to say uh, about the praying and so forth that uh, I'm in a a group that meets on Monday mornings, and each week they they plan for the next week. They ask somebody if they'd be willing to give mm -hmm. the devotion, and somebody else if they'd be willing to give the prayer, and so that sort of gets people prepared mm -hmm. and takes the burden off you. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Thank you for sharing that. That's really good. Okay, so we're now going to move into our breakthrough. So we, we're gonna go, uh, we're, the breakthrough, what we're talking about is we're talking about telling your stories. So uh, would someone be willing to read what's on the screen there for telling your stories? Sure, I'll, I'll read it. It's Greg. Okay, Greg. Uh, the, <clears throat> there are stories you never forget. There are others that you want to forget. There are stories that are undeniably life-changing. All of them play a significant role in our lives. So let's look deeper into them. Okay, thank you. So I cool. sent to each of you um, the, the small group um telling your stories did did all of you get this the small group uh, materials that i sent to you yes okay so this week okay. so you get to see and i have it on the screen so you can see that too this week um we are doing this the second lesson which is called the whole story and the scripture passage for it is first timothy 1 12 through 7 so um, 
me. There's someone asking me a question. Okay. Yeah. Don't see it. Okay. So, um, so you can see this is the outline for every single one of the, um, the small groups that, um, oh, I'm sorry. I have the wrong one up here. Well, that's, well, you know what? I'm going to show you this first. Okay. So uh, you have the outline for the small groups. There is something that, uh, there's a companion to this. And this is the outline that a pastor would get to preach this same scripture. And I thought as a small group leader, it might be helpful to just read this over ahead of time because this might give you a little bit of context about your, um, what, what's happening in the scripture. So I'm going to send this to you this week so that you um, can see this. But um, I'm going to switch back again to the right one. Here's the telling your no. I don't know why. Can you see the, let me see. Do you see the small group outline now? So it says opening prayer. Is that what you see? Okay. Yeah, so this yeah, is sure. the same small group outline that you get every single week and every breakthrough is, is laid out exactly the same. So everything has an opening prayer. It has a quote that you can put in that's in context. So you can put that for your, if you put things in social media, it has the ice breaking question. And then it has the scripture, some questions about um, uh, the next, uh, wrestling with the scripture, some next steps and a closing prayer. So everything looks exactly the same for every week. So, so um, I'm going to also send this to you. And this gives us an idea of how do you break up your time? Now, I broke this time up for a 40 minute lesson in case you are using a free Zoom. So, therefore, you got to get done in 40 minutes. So you would do welcome and prayer, and that takes about five minutes. Breaking the ice and uh, questions and scripture reading, that takes eight minutes. The overview and the wrestling with the word. So the overview is you can read what's in the um, preaching notes so people have a little bit of context for the scripture. And then you do the wrestling with the word um, questions. Next steps take about 12 minutes and closing prayer here is just reading a prayer. So unfortunately, when the lesson, when you have to get it into 40 minutes, you don't have a lot of time for um, a lot of uh, prayer requests. So um, maybe having people put their prayer request in the chat room, that way um, everybody can um, uh, see them. And actually, if at the end of it, you can copy all the prayer requests and, and mail it and email it out to everyone. So it is a, a fairly kind of condensed schedule when, um, when you only have 40 minutes. Now, I honestly tell you, even if you didn't have 40 minutes, I would suggest you stick to that timeline, but then at the very end, have enough time at the end for some prayer requests. Does anybody have any questions about the timeline piece? So the last week, we're gonna actually do the whole thing in 40 minutes so that you guys can see how that works. But I wanted you to have the context of other small group leaders um, in the midst of this so you, um, so you could hear what they, um, 
uh, what they are, they're, they're doing in their churches. Karen said, I might have missed it, but do you give out the scriptures ahead of time? Um, you can give out the scriptures ahead of time. That's probably a good idea, especially if you're doing the 40 minute thing. But I do think you have to read the scripture during the lesson because it's, it's in the reading of it that you actually are pulling out the things for wrestling with the word. I would suggest if you're gonna have any people who are calling in, so therefore they can't see your screen, that you make sure that they have their Bibles with them so that they can actually have the scripture uh, right there in front of them. I'm gonna send out for, um, for anybody who wishes, I'm gonna send out slides for uh, telling your story. And I will create slides for any other um, uh, breakthrough session that you would like so that it would have the slides similar to what I am showing today. So we're gonna go back to sharing the screen. And we have the opening prayer. So Karen, can you see the opening prayer? Would you be willing to read that? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, God of all nations, we invite you into this place. Jesus, we light this candle as a sign of your presence. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, enlighten us. We pray that we keep our hearts and minds open to new ideas and that we may grow in our understanding of your ways. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we have the opening prayer. And then today's breaking the ice question is, describe a time a parent or a teacher or a boss made you feel special. Did that change you in any way? So we're going to try something today because we we we're a little short on time, but I want to have you at least uh, try this. So um, we are going to have you um, break up into um, breakout rooms. And um, we are gonna, what I'm gonna have you do is um, you're gonna go into a breakout room and you'll have two people there, or, or one group might have three. And I want you to answer the question, describe a time when a parent, teacher, or boss made you feel special. Okay, so we're gonna do the breakout rooms and um, I'm gonna bring you back after like two minutes so you don't have a lot of time to, to talk. You'll have to be kind of quick, two or three minutes, okay? So Gina. let's... Yes. Can I, excuse me, can I ask you a quick question? This is more logistic. Sure. So you're going to do a breakout room. So if we're doing this and we're trying to do a breakout room, could you just give us a quick tutorial or whatever it is that you do? Like, are you just arbitrarily saying divide us up into groups of three? Are you picking people? So what I did was click the breakout rooms. It gives us the idea. It says assign participants into, and it allows you to quit, uh, do how many rooms? I said four rooms. Okay. It gives you the option of doing it automatically or manually. And so I'm uh, doing it automatically. I'll create okay. the breakout rooms and then I will bring you back after a certain amount of time so that you'll okay. zoom. It'll kind of be like, beam me up, Scotty. You'll just leave the room. Okay. And so, yeah. And okay. we're going to practice you. that next week for anybody who has it. If you have a free account, you won't have it. And if you mm -hmm. have the basic account, you won't have it. But if you, if it's, um, it, it was instead of $10 a month, it was $14 a month to have the breakout rooms. So you're okay, going to, you. you're headed out into breakout rooms. All right. So Bonnie, you and I are together here. I'm unmuting you. Hmm.
set timer two minutes. Okay, two minutes and counting. Hey, Ed. Hello. I don't know if Bonnie has her audio set. I just asked her, her, her microphone shows it's muted. And I, yeah, and no matter what I do, it won't unmute. So uh, I did try to, so I saw that you and she were together. So tell me about a teacher or someone who just kind of made you uh, feel special. Um, geez, I'm trying to think if anybody made me feel special. Uh, I think of several occasions when you would think it would be making you feel special, but I didn't take it that way. Does that count? Yeah, that's sure. <laughs> uh, when I was in the Coast Guard, I was on the ship. That we were going into Halifax, Nova Scotia the next day, and the captain uh, very, uh, to me, sarcastically and kind of nastily said, Oh, and by the way, I'd like you to take the ship in tomorrow. So be on the bridge at 0700 when the pilot comes on board and you're going to take it all the way into the dock. Well, that wasn't my particular job during entering port, but the way he said it, it was like it was a test. Mm. So he might have he might have thought he was making me feel special, but our relationship wasn't degraded. Um, so that when the pilot came on board and said, we're going to a different dock. You don't have to, you, I'll take it in for you. The captain said, all right, you don't have to do it. And because of the way he approached me the night before, I said, oh no, that's all right, captain. I'll take it into the dock. And then I thought, what a dope I was. But I did, <laughs> a, I did a great job, better than he had ever done. So I felt pretty good. But uh, <laughs> in that part, I thought it was special after the fact. But during it before and uh, during the action it was not that special how oh. about you yeah well i'm going to close the room so oh, okay. i think we're good but thanks for the story that was a good story <laughs> we're back here i i think the first time i got to got to ask, someone asked me to lead disciples bible study that made me feel very special. Yeah, that's, that, it would. I guess, I guess I could have said that since I was new to the Christian yeah. church. And he, <laughs> he asked me, or Christina was the one that asked. But um, yeah, that's kind of special when you're new. Yeah. So how did you guys uh, like the breakout experience? I know it wasn't a lot of time. You're all muted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on mute. I keep forgetting. My pastor just started that. We are doing virtual coffee hour mm -hmm. and she's dividing us up into break rooms. And I love it because um, one of the women in our uh, break room, she normally is one of the coffee hour hosts. Mm -hmm. She was sitting there eating food. I said, I don't like this. I'm watching you eat and I'm not having anything. <laughs> so, the, so the next week she made a food for us and we came and picked it up where she delivered to the people. We had bread. We had a big meal. I love the breakout room. That was great. Good. What, did, what was the rest of you? What was your experience of the breakout room? Just unmute yourself and chat. I, I just uh, found it more uh, personal. One big room. Yeah, it's more personal. And that's what if you, you know, I know it's an investment money wise, but it really is a, a great thing for, for larger groups. Yeah. Anybody else? I, I thought it was, I thought it was great. Now my breakout room it was just two people. And so that's more of a one on one conversation, which I'm much more comfortable with. Right. Uh, and, and, and I had the opportunity of uh, chatting with John, uh, who I didn't know. And it was just, um, it, it, it was neat. And it was kind of, it was, I wish we had more time. Right. But, but we, and, I think we packed a lot into the time. <laughs> right. So if you have those breakout rooms, I would say, you know, you put three people in it. So you figure it, it it'll tell you, you know, how many people will be in the room if you, um, 
if you said five rooms or whatever. And if you put three people, three people is perfect for the conversation. Because mm. if you have a one who's a little more chatty, one who's quieter, it kind of balances everything out. So wait, I know we had some questions. Uh, oh, th so you're writing stuff to each other. So that's great. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we're going to go to the next. Um, so the, the next piece is after breaking your ice, the ice is the scripture. John, do you think you could see this scripture on the screen and could you read it for us? Would you mind? I see it and I'll read it. <laughs> okay, thank you. First Timothy chapter one, verses 12 through 17. I thank Jesus, Christ Jesus, our Lord. He has given me the strength for my work because he knew that he could trust me. I used to say terrible and insulting things about him, and I was cruel. But he had mercy on me because I didn't know what I was doing, and I had not yet put my faith in him. Christ Jesus, our Lord, was very kind to me. He has greatly blessed my life with faith and love just like his own. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This saying is true, and it can be trusted. I was the worst sinner of all. But since I was worse than anyone else, God had mercy on me and let me be an example of the endless patience of Christ Jesus. He did this so that others would put their faith in Christ and have eternal life. I pray that honor and glory will always be given to the only God who lives forever and is the invisible and eternal King. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So now we're going to go back to... Um, those preaching notes that I was telling you about. So can all of you see a screen that says uh, focus statement there at the top? Does everyone see that screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, up, stop. Okay, so this is the preaching notes, and this is the piece that I think that if you go over this in um, before you do the lesson, and maybe even read the God part, it gives you an idea of what what is the the focus of this if your pastor was preaching the sermon series you wouldn't need to do this because your pastor would be hitting all these points but in most cases the small groups are not that the pastor is preaching the series so um what it's talking about is you know what are there our shortcomings how do we relate to shortcomings and um it uh it talks about uh, okay, so the God piece is how do we take apart the scripture? And so the notes that we put in here is in 1 Timothy, Paul's story of conversion from a pers persecutor of the church to its chief proponent. And it gives us an example of conversion and transformation. So we know that an important piece in this lesson is the idea of conversion and transformation. And it shows a life that has been redeemed by the unlimited love and grace of God. And then it gives you a, a, just a couple points here. So he writes this letter to his protege, which we know is Timothy, to encourage him in his ministry and his faith. And part of his instruction, Paul narrates his calling. So, um, so it gives you an idea of that Paul's calling was shaky, contentious at the beginning, he was a persecutor. So this gives you those kinds of pieces of information. And then he talks about um, all, all the things that he was proud of before he came to um, believing in Christ. And so 
and then it says, you know, the important part is that he doesn't gloss over or diminish, but instead he insists that it is for sinners that like him, that Christ came to save the world. So that kind of just gives us a little bit of context. And then I think I'd read the you piece too. So the you says, this is kind of the hope piece. God has a plan for redemption that includes you. So all of us have fallen short, but because of the grace of God, God has a plan. Okay, so we're gonna now go back to the wrestling with the word. And so it's the question that we would be wrestling with is Paul shares his own faith and failings. How might this help his audience? So what do you guys think? How do you think it would help for Paul to share about Paul sharing his, um, his the, the ways he's fallen short? Just unmute yourself, press your key, you know, just shout out an answer. The good thing is there's no, wrong answers here i think it is you you don't have to be perfect to have a relationship with god yeah yeah and i think i you're working to say something similar to melanie i think we tend to hold ourselves to a high standard and always feel like we're not quite good enough so mm -hmm. uh, we hesitate yeah. And we often hold our leaders to that even higher standard. And um, you get to the point where it's, they do something wrong and your whole faith life can be shaken if you've done that. Mm -hmm. If you've made put them on the highest pedestal, uh, you feel that how could they have ever done that? They betrayed me. Well, we're all the same. We all have our problems. Anyone else? Yes, I think for me, um, I could say personally, I had to battle a lot of um, guilt and shame from things from the past. And I think a lot of people um, have to deal with that. But so when Paul talks about, you know, the things that he did, but God used them in such a mightily way, that that helps people maybe work through anything that they're carrying. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie, I think you actually got unmuted. Could you just say hello so we know that we can hear you? Hello, Gina. Hello, Bonnie. There, great. <laughs> to go along with everyone else's thinking is, I believe that God, Paul using his experience will tell everyone else, even though you've done things wrong, God's there. And you can, you can have the grace of God too. Yeah. So, um, how do you how do you think that might help um, in your your church? Just knowing the place that Paul came from and the place that he ended up. Anyone? It might take us longer to get there but we have an example that if we persevere, we can get that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, perseverance. That's a really, that's a good characteristic there. I would offer the fact that if we can become uh, self-aware of our own shortcomings, we should be more tolerant and more forgiving and more grace filled with the people that we come in contact with in the church or the visitors or people who we always thought were the curmudgeons or the troublemakers or whatever. Uh, we're all coming from the same place and it, it gives us the opportunity to show grace. Yeah. John, were you going to say something? Yeah. Um, one of the things that drew me to this congregation was um, the lead, both the lead pastor and the assistant pastor are very open about the uh, warts and flaws and rocks and uh, downturns of their spiritual journeys, which makes it easier for congregation members to tell each other their stories. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as leaders, we're called to, you know, um, to share the places where we've fallen. Um, and because that gives pe other people the encouragement to, um, to look at, at those things themselves. Um, in verse 17, so if we, we look at um, verse 17, which um, says, I pray that honor and glory will always be given to the only God who lives forever and is, in, in, is the invisible and eternal king. That he, that's um, a doxology of a kind. And so you would invite your group to say, okay, what were the characteristics of a doxology? So what were, you know, if we think of our doxology that most of us sing most Sundays when we do our offering, what are some of the characteristics of a doxology that you would want to include in your own doxology? So maybe a word or two, Margie? Praise. Praise, right. Thanks. Thanks, right. They tend to describe God in almost hyperbolic terms. Yeah, give, say a minute more about that. Um, they tend to say God is the biggest, the invisible, the most. Yeah, so you know. yeah, almighty, yeah, yeah. So, and so you as a group would come over and you would write that. Now, do you, does everyone hear my timer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I had set the timer for eight minutes. So when we started our conversation after the reading of the scripture and after I read this first sent the question, I set the timer for eight minutes. So that was not an uncomfortably long period of time to discuss something, was it? Yeah. It actually was pretty, it went pretty quick, right? I mean, we have, um, we have 10 people on this call. I think, you know, if, if someone wanted to talk, they probably would have the time to, but you as a leader might want to read through the questions. A lot of times we have th three to five questions under wrestling with the word, and you might want to choose the ones that you think are most important to you to lead with, because you probably won't get through all the questions. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the next steps. So um, the next steps is how do we apply this to our own lives? So not um, so not so much looking at what happened in the scripture, um, and not necessarily looking at what happens in our, our church life, but it could be our church life. But how do we apply this? So Paul give, thanks Jesus, who has given him strength. Jesus gives strength to all who follow. How do we lean on this strength? So for you, how, how are we leaning? How do we lean on the strength? So Paul says he can't do it on his own. How do we lean on the strength of, uh, of Jesus? Think through a prayer. Prayer, yeah. Well, I, I can say you mean in the sense that you ask the Holy Spirit to help you because you might have situations or or feelings and stuff that arise in you. You know that little talking in your head, that negative mm -hmm. talk, and you just rely on the Holy Spirit to give me strength that you know I listen to your word and not that negative talk. Mm. I'm gonna, I'll say um, in terms of like that constant communication with the spirit with um, as you go through your daily your, you, through your day you know I'm just just you know something happens that's difficult just stop a moment and maybe just you know ask for strength and uh, and uh, you know to get behind me Satan or whatever whatever it is you know and uh, in, in terms of what you're doing so yeah. So, I mean, so as you can tell, you can see how these questions go and, and how, you know, so we got through three minutes. You know, I want to end on time, so that's why we're not, we're not going to keep going this today. 
but you can see the, how the, the, the flow of this, uh, this goes. And then the next piece that, um, or the last piece on this, is the closing prayer. But before we get to the closing prayer, um, is there anything that, you know, um, someone feels like they would like me to make sure that I cover in the next lesson? In the next lesson, we are going to um, do share the screen. And so I'm going to ask you to put something up on your screen that you don't mind sharing. So even if it's just a Word document that you just type in good morning, um, I'm going to I'm going to uh, allow permission for all of you to share the screen. Um, generally, um, we don't set permissions for everyone, but I did um, change some of them on this call. So I'm going to allow permissions for everyone to share their screen. So just make sure you have something so I can teach you all how to um, share the screen. But is the, if there's anything else that you think of that you, know, you want, just send me an email and I'll, I'll be happy to cover that. It, did this make you feel a little more comfortable about the breakthrough experience and maybe leading a small group? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. 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 Well, um, let's Gina, see. I was going to say, that, yeah, this is this is really good because it creates some organization, uh, as you said, in the time frame, minutes allocated to it, and it gives some talking points and discussion, uh, at least a fall you know, to guide you through. So I think this is really, really very good. Thank you for, you know, sharing it. With You're us. welcome. And, you know, I will, because I remember, I didn't remember until afterwards, um, but I, this was the only one that we only had January and then Lent, and I didn't want to go through Lent again. Um, but this is one of the hardest ones. I can tell you that some of the rest for the rest of the year, they're not as theologically uh, difficult as this one. Mm. So if you could get through this one, this is really one of the okay. hardest ones. Okay. Will, will I, we get that sheet that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Ed, pardon me. Uh, will we, ahead, Greg. Okay, thank you. Uh, will we get that sheet you were showing us where it said we, you? Yes, I'm, the preaching notes. I'm going to send that to you this okay. week. Yes. Okay, and every single one of them has preaching notes as well as small groups that you'll have the same guide every single week. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Just briefly, because I don't want to hold up the works here, but um, the Connect guides that we've been using at Haddonfield are very, very much like what you just saw. And if you're interested, especially if you're looking for material, uh, go and get the Haddonfield UMC app at the App Store. And on the app, there's a section that says Connect Guides. And I think almost all the Connect guides in the last two years that have ever been developed are on there. You can pull them up one at a time and go through them. They've got the opening prayer. It's got the light the candle. It's got the, the icebreaker, the scripture, some other stuff, all the questions. And if you're short on material or you're looking for material. Yeah, it's good stuff. It. I, I have it on my phone. And it's really good stuff. And I will send uh, you that information in your email so that you have that. Well, I thank um, Ed for coming and, and joining us today. I, I thank uh, you all for being on this call and, um, and you will receive an email today uh, or tomorrow probably that has the information that we talked about. Um, next week we'll be here at uh, 11 o'clock on Wednesday. If you can't make the Wednesday call, we're on the call at 6.30. We cover the same information 6.30 on Thursday nights. So I'm gonna just read the closing prayer that was with this uh, lesson. It says, Lord, we thank you for the way that you are with us in all circumstances. We are grateful for those who journey with us, sometimes just for a moment, others for a lifetime. Keep our hearts and minds focused on sharing joy and love that comes from you. Amen. Thank you, my friends. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you soon.